Coast, presented by Progressive Insurance. A Smith Show appeared via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Live, and you can always get it. Twitter feed. Download the Vivid Seat to promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a Vivid Seat. 31 minutes past hour number two back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Before I go back to the phones, a couple of things I want to do. Number one, I want to transition to football for a second before getting back to basketball. Antonio Brown showed up on The Shop, HBO's uh, The Shop, uh, led by LeBron James, Maverick Carter, and the crew. <clears throat> and he uh, said some things about Mike Tomlin, Big Ben Roethlisberger, and what have you. Here's what the bottom line is with Antonio Brown. Certainly what he's saying doesn't help Big Ben Roethlisberger's reputation because Big Ben Roethlisberger comes across as a privileged individual devoid of the proper leadership skills uh, who's pacified by the Steelers. Um, and exerts his prowess um, and privilege um, to the detriment of his teammates whenever he so chooses. I'm not saying that's accurate. I'm saying that's the impression that Antonio Brown is giving. That doesn't help Big Ben. The other thing to point out is that Mike Tomlin isn't helped along either to some degree because Antonio Brown sits there and says the man told the team he quit on them, blah, 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 blah. But Mike Tomlin has been around this league for a long time. He's won 65% of his games. He's a Super Bowl champion. He's been to two Super Bowl appearances, albeit he should have been to more than that over the last few years. But the bottom line is Mike Tomlin has done a great job. Not the greatest, but he's done a great job in the grand scheme of things when you look at him in comparison to other guys around the league. And as far as I'm concerned, the Steelers would be absolute fools to lose him. Nobody looks worse than Antonio Brown. And I'm not talking because of that ridiculous mustache he's has. You know, gold mustache. I don't know what the hell that's about. I'm talking because he's so outspoken in so many areas. Why would a team want to bring you in their locker room? I could understand if you've already signed on with a team. But the Steelers have your rights. They haven't traded you yet. And on top of it all, the team, any team that you'd want to go to, how anxious are they going to be? Whether it's Washington, whether it's the Raiders, whether it's Tennessee as reported, how anxious is anybody going to be about bringing you into their locker room? You going to talk about them next? It's just not that smart. It just isn't. That's number one. Number two, I want to reiterate what I said near the top of the show about Larry Bear, the CEO for the San Francisco Giants, caught on tape trying to wrestle something out of his wife's hand. She ultimately screamed and was falling over in a chair. He didn't break her fall. He didn't try to prevent her from falling. I believe it's because she 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 she, she had something in her hand. He was trying to get a hold of. I think I, and me personally, I'm just speculating. I have no idea. But I would tell you situations like that when a man is lunging for something to get something out of his woman's hands, it's usually because he's caught creeping and doesn't want to get caught. She's got something in her hand, some evidence, some very incriminating stuff that this guy was trying to sit up there and get his hands on. That's how it looked when you slow it down. First of all, there's no justification for what he did, period. What I'm saying, I'm simply talking to you. If you slow-mo it, look at what happened. Not like he swung on her and hit her or whatever. He was lunging for the thing in her hand trying to get out of her hand. It looked like she had some incriminating evidence. Something he had done he didn't want her to see. Whether it's the phone or iPad or something. And he was trying to get that out of her hand. And obviously she fell over in the chair and he should have done something to help her. And then he walks away and just leaves her there. This man gets allowed to take a leave of absence. If that had been a player, we would have been all over them. But somehow, some way, we want to hold young kids in their 20s accountable. But executives or executive, executive officers in this country, who happen to be white, by the way, oh, they get to take a leave of absence. If it had been a player, we'd be all over them. In their 20s. But grown-ass men. In their 50s 
seed and beyond. Get to act like a bunch of hooligans and nobody has anything to say, huh? Nothing. Just a little report that shows up on ESPN. Yeah, they show the highlights too. But then after that, nobody says anything. Nothing. Just let it go. But if that had been a 20-year-old kid, y'all want his life to be over. But grown damn men in positions of power who in all likelihood have themselves set up for years to come, if not the rest of their lives. Oh, we'll just ignore that, right? But we'll hold the 20-year-old accountable and try to literally eviscerate his life. Folks, it's something else, man. This country's backwards. Usually it's the older adults that are held accountable not the young ones. But what do I know? 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Antonio, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm all right, man. Go ahead. Speak up and get some more bass in your voice so my audience can hear you. What's up? Yes, sir. Hey. Man, it's time for Luke to go, man. It's time for him to go, man. How in the world... When LeBron goes down for 18 games and you can't keep them boys in the playoff spot? Well, I think it's a foregone conclusion that he is gone. We won't even be having a discussion about, I don't even think we'd be having a discussion about trade talks. Even after LeBron went down, he kept them in the playoff spot. He got to keep them boys rallied together. I mean, he might not be, he's a good coach. He's gonna be, he might be a good coach somewhere else, but that's not the team for him right now. LeBron, he's a great coach. Do you Lakers, agree? Lakers are held to a, Lakers are held to a higher standard, and there's more demands, and you're not supposed to stand pat. But I I do have news for you, and this is my brother, and I love him. But Luke Walton is not nearly as much of a problem as the roster that Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka have assembled. These guys can't shoot. You're one of the worst three point shooting teams, one of the t- bottom three three point shooting teams in the entire NBA. You're dead last in free throw shooting. Can't hit threes, can't make free throws. And you're giving up 122 points a game. And oh, by the way, the veteran leadership with champions like LeBron, Rondo, and Tyson Chandler in the locker room. Yet things seem a bit discombobulated. But we're pointing to Luke Walton. Don't get me wrong, he's going to suffer. He's going to pay a price. But how really, really fair is that when you look at this roster? How really fair is that? That's all I'm saying. Right. Appreciate appreciate the call, man. Thank you. Brandon, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, man. How you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Talk to me. What's up? I'm talking about Eric Blessel signing, man. Four years, 70 million. That's a great signing because Florida's probably the starting lineup for the Bucks already free agents besides Yonder. So why not lock him in? L- why not lock who in? Blessel. No, no, no. I now have no problem with what Milwaukee did. What I'm saying is, look, I'm proud of Rich Paul. But I got to admit to you, I'm partial. I'm proud of all of these brothers out there. I talk about Rich Paul because he deserves to be talked about. And it ain't just because he represents LeBron James. He represents Ben Simmons. He represents John Wall. Got John Wall $170 million. Ben Simmons got some things coming up. Got Tristan Thompson and J.R. Smith some money. All right, Draymond Green just went with him. But I'm one of those guys, I'm not going to sit up here and talk about Rich Paul who, by the way, has received assistance from LeBron James. As much credit as he deserves and as much love as I have for him, let's face it, being associated with LeBron, being LeBron's boy doesn't hurt. But Aaron and Eric Goodwin didn't have that luxury. And I can assure you, they're hella five agents. Damian Lillard about to sign for $200 plus million. Let me tell you something right now. The Goodwins represent him. Bill Duffy is one of the best agents this business has ever known. Henry Thomas, God rest his soul, who passed away, who used to represent Bosch and and D. Wade and those boys, was a hell of an agent. So when I see brothers in the agent business doing a hell of a job, I'm never going to hesitate to give them credit. I'm not going to hesitate to give Rich Paul credit, but I'm not going to ignore the Goodwin brothers and Duffy and Thomas and those other cats either. Now, having said all of that, I also got to be real and point out the other side to this. 
Milwaukee did just fine. I think they got off easy. I think Bledsoe could have gotten more than $70 million. He's eligible for a five-year deal in a few months. When you look at the free agent guards, the Kyries and the Kembers, and what amount of money that they're going to get, they're going to set a market at about $23 million plus per year. I so agree. to me, I'm so to me, I'm looking at Bledsoe, and I'm like, if Milwaukee makes a run through the postseason in the next couple of months, how are you going to deny Bledsoe 100 million dollars in today's market? Agreed. I think if they, I, all I'm saying is, I think if they had waited, I think Bledsoe would have got another 30 million. You think another that small market 20, playing 20 to 30 Brogdon, million? You think that small market playing Brogdon? Lopez and Middleton, you think they could pay everybody $30 million? Well, I don't think they could pay everybody, but remember, the cap is scheduled to go up to $119 million, if I remember correctly. It's going to be the largest NBA cap in history. And the money, and remember, money, according to the collective bargaining, the money has to be spent. You don't get to pocket it like Donald Sterling used to do in the 80s. You got to spend that money because that's an agreement with the players. So if the cap goes up and you got to spend those, those dollars, you're going to have those dollars to spend. And I'm not saying 30 like literally, but do I think Bledsoe could have got 85 to 100 million? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That's all I'm saying. I think they, I think, I, I think they could have got more money. That's all I'm saying. That's just me. 888 ESPN is 888-729-3776. You're live with Stephen A. right here at ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, do you have frequent heartburn? Like the kind where you have an acid stashed everywhere in case it pops up? You know what I mean. You keep some in your bag or your desk or your car or your nightstand. You have those chalky tablets ready for whenever and wherever heartburn strikes. Well, listen up. There's an easier way to deal with your heartburn. That's Prilosec OTC. Just one pill a day will last a full 24 hours with zero heartburn. So kick your antacid habit. It's possible with Prilosec OTC. Use this directed for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn. It's not for immediate relief. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Back with your calls to close out the show in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Learn what affects your credit scores and what you can do to improve them with Credit Karma. Maybe you need to dispute an 